We get a lot of questions about Woke AF from DOS Labs, and with good reason. A lot of people want to know why the product works, what they like about it, or why it does so well. So today we're going to talk about the real science behind Woke AF, why you might like the way it feels, and why it's probably not the deer antler velvet in the product. So DOS Labs is a very well-to-do company. They've got uh, Woke AF, which is a big seller. Obviously, the marketing, the logo, all of it revolves around deer antler velvet. It's their big thing. We've seen what the community has to say about it. We've seen you know what the general sentiment is about deer antler velvet. And today I'm here to offer another side of the argument why this product feels good, why it performs well. I actually don't think it's deer antler velvet. Maybe that's what attracts people in, but I actually think it's here for a lot of the other stuff in here. Namely, one of my favorite ingredients we're using right now, Synactive from New Live, but also a bunch of other ingredients at fine dosages. So today, let's give Woke AF a fair, honest breakdown of the science behind the ingredients. From the top, let's dive right in. Citrulline malate, two to one ratio, six grams. So you're getting four grams of citrulline here, two grams of malic acid. Citrulline malate is no longer bonded. This is simply citrulline and malic acid blend together. Not that against DOS Labs for doing this. A lot of companies are not mentioning them separately. They are separate ingredients. They're just blended together and sold as one ingredient. Citrulline has a lot of different benefits. Most namely, you're gonna be using it for pump here. Most people who are taking this pre-workout are trying to get some blood flow to their muscles during their training. Malic acid has some muscles benefits for energy it mostly really is going to help out with the flavoring here but essentially malate is a great place to start six grams is a fine dosage to use you'll see anywhere between four and like 10 grams of this six is a fine place to be it starts this formula off just fine as a normal mainstream pre-workout nothing crazy let's move on forward beta alanine 3200 milligrams now this is the woke af high stimulant version there, there's some meme right around here about this being high considered high stimulant you're not that guy pal trust me you're not that guy but uh the formula is going to be a little bit different here um i went with this one because it's the one that i like and i think it's the one that people should be purchasing this so if you're looking at different woke afs look for the woke af high stimulant version uh not the black version this is really you know if you're going to pick up one of these it's the one that i would be happy with you picking up with so you got 3200 milligrams which is generally considered to be the clinical dosage of beta alanine beta alanine is the rate limiting factor in the creation of carnosine with the body beta alanine and histidine are uh, used to create carnosine which buffers lactic acid within the body helps extend your sets helps extend your workouts it's going to help a lot with performance if you are any sort of athlete from endurance to weight training this is something that i think that a lot of people should be checking out now 3200 milligrams is not the only dose that you can take it at it's just one of the popular studied doses this is an ingredient that needs to be loaded over time so your body has blood saturation another version of woke has two grams i believe which is not bad but 3200 milligrams is generally seen as the clinical dosage. So far, six grams of citrulline malate, 3,200 milligrams beta alanine. I can see why people would purchase this product. So far, it is pretty clinical and it's gonna work for a lot of people. From there, you get into caffeine and high juice. And this is where it's considered to be a high stimulant pre-workout. You got 333 milligrams of caffeine and high juice. By no measure is this like a ridiculously high amount of caffeine. 333 milligrams is about like, four shots of espresso, um, which sounds like a lot, but safety data for caffeine goes up to 13 milligrams per kilogram. For most strength benefits, you're gonna be looking at six to eight milligrams per kilogram. This is a fine dosage for pretty much anyone. If you're a very small female, this may be a little bit extra for you, but 333 is not by any stretch of the imagination, a crazy high dosage. From there, we have another 300 milligrams of theobromine. Theobromine is uh, chemically similar to caffeine. It has a really great synergy with caffeine. It will help with that stimulant effect. One of the things that researchers found was um, subjectively or just anecdotally from from uh patients in the trials was that theobromine helped increase the stimulant feeling of caffeine and made the caffeine feeling more intense um, but this is going to be a small increase to it. it is not in no way going to be feeling similar to any sort of gray area or illegal ingredient this was um i actually purchased this at a uh, vitamin shop vitamin shop does not house super high stimulant stuff they really only stock stuff that's going to be safe for most people you're totally safe in here now so those four ingredients there are all in great dosages that's a great awesome start to a pre-workout that's something that if i saw these four i'd be like wow that's, that's that's awesome i'm really happy with those now the next two ingredients is kind of where it's you kind of scratch your heads for a second 
200 milligrams of alpha size alpha GPC. Now, I'm not someone to look a gift horse in the mouth. Alpha uh, GPC is an awesome ingredient that I'm happy to see, but 200 milligrams is a little bit less than we're like to see here. I'd like to see 300 milligrams. Um, I'm, you know, it's a calling source. I'm definitely not gonna uh, be disappointed that they're giving us some, but I'd like to see some more. Alpha GPC is an interesting version of choline. Um, it has a bunch of different benefits. I'm not gonna go super in depth here because I really wanna focus on the latter half of this formula between the deer antler velvet and the synactive. But with that all being said, Alpha GPC is an ingredient that I like to see. I'm never gonna look a gift horse in the mouth and be sad that it's included. It is included alongside Huperzine A, which is synergistic to create more acetylcholine, which is the learning neurotransmitter. It helps out with a lot of different things from you might guess learning to also muscle contractions. Acetylcholine is very important uh, and the formation of that is great for training. Uh, it's just not a great dosage here. After that, like I said again, 100 milligrams of taurine. Taurine is an, a non-essential amino acid that pretty much any pre-workout you see me talking about with taurine, I'm always excited about it, but I'd really like to see over a gram of it. 100 milligrams, in fact, if you go on PubMed and you search 100 milligrams of uh, taurine, what you will find is a study showing that 100 milligrams per kilogram is a great dosage for athletes to be checking out. If you're a one kilogram athlete, this would be a great dosage for you, but you're likely not that light. It's just kind of confusing. It's almost like they wanted a gram, but they forgot a zero and somehow they made it to this stage without upping it. Like I said on the last ingredient, I'm never going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm happy they included taurine, but at 100 milligrams, I really don't know if there's going to be any effect at all. It's not an expensive ingredient, so I just wish they had thrown more in here. These are two ingredients that I love to see them naming. Ironically, if this is in a proprietary blend, it would look a lot better because it you wouldn't know how little there is in here. With all that being said, you know, hey, they added it, that's cool. I just wish there was more. You're likely not gonna find the focus or performance benefits of alpha GPC or Toyin from these two. Now from there, they add in Himalayan rock salt with trace minerals. They have 100 milligrams of here. Now minerals are not something that you need a huge dosage of, especially here trace minerals are likely all gonna be small dosages. Um, you end up with a very small amount of salt. In, in fact, it's only 39 milligrams of salt. Most athletes that are looking to add salt to their pre-workout are looking for significantly more than that. This is not a significant source of salt. Some people are afraid of large doses of salt. If you are an advanced athlete, it's not something you should be concerned about. That all being said, hey, it's nice they added in here. It might help with some flavoring, uh, but you're not getting any kind of boost in muscle contractions or sodium, really. Add it to your total, total daily amount. The devil's advocate here is that I constantly tell everyone, if you're waiting to take 500 milligrams of sodium pre-workout, you're already too late. You should be salting all of your meals. So. Uh, they really leaned out to, into that uh, opinion here and didn't give you very much. But this is where it, it really gets into a good discussion. We've got deer antler velvet, uh, astrogen, actogen, and huperzine A. So these are all really kind of, well, the first one's a controversial ingredient, deer antler velvet. But after that one, we get into really good ingredients that I'm a huge believer in. So we've got, so we've got 50 milligrams of deer antler velvet extract. And this is where we have to sit down and get honest with ourselves because deer antler velvet has some promising data, but is that data applicable to this product? Now, if you're really into reading and you want the citations of these studies, uh, they're all on the blog. Mike did an incredible job with this with this post. Mike probably won't watch this video, but I really want to give him props for what he wrote here. I usually use these uh, blog posts as a bit of like outlines for my videos because they help keep me within check. Um, but he did a great job of breaking down like what actually is deer antler velvet, right? We, we talk about it all the time, but to get, I'm gonna give you, um, as an animal lover, a, a good picture of what it is. It's crushed antler from actual deer. It's specifically the base of the antler. Um, elk is used sometimes said, but we assume here it's deer exclusively since that's what the label states. Antler velvet has traditionally been used in Chinese medicine to help with gynecological issues, immunity, cardiovascular disease, general health, uh, general tissue health. The general idea is uh, stems from the fact that the G deer regenerate their antlers so well and hormones actually circulate throughout the antlers so their constituents should be health promotional. Now, the process of them making this is kind of disgusting, not like gory or anything, but it's just kind of shitty that anyone would do this. Generally, the deer are put on painkillers and the antlers are sawed off with the deer still alive. Now, the process does not kill the animal because the deer regrow their antlers every year. That's why you find the antlers in the woods sometimes. But we have to make clear this is far 
from being a vegan supplement. Now, what's inside these uh, antlers, you might ask? Well, uh, inside there are things like joint health promoting collagen, chondroitin, hyaluronic acid, a lot of dietary minerals, including calcium, obviously. Um, beyond protein, sugar, fatty acids, there's uh, actually hormones found in them in one study. Uh, one study claimed that there were several hormones. The provider of the ingredient for the study cited, we'll, we'll give you this here, per 250 milligram capsule of deer antler velvet, there was 0.15 nanograms of androsten. I always say this one wrong. Androstenedione, 0.16 nanograms of dehydroepiandrosterone, 0.57 nanograms of progesterone, 0.61 nanograms of testosterone, and 3.5, I don't know what PG stands for, but something grams estradiol. An incredibly small amount. And that's that's estrogen, if you didn't know. Now, the study doesn't state who the source of the information was, where they got that from, but in general, they're claiming deer antler velvet contains these things. Does the deer antler velvet in Woke AF contain these things? We don't know. It doesn't standardize for anything. There's no information. But just wanted to share that information on that one study. Where that came from, we don't know. Uh, is it applicable to this? We don't know. Um, but let's talk about the actual research on the usage of it. So there was a study, obviously, um, since it contains hormones, on whether or not it could do anything for testosterone for males. Three studies tested for testosterone in Greece and it failed to establish any hormonal change. These studies use far more than what's in Bucked Up Pre being uh, 1 gram, 1.5 grams and 560 milligrams. There's only 50 milligrams in here. Uh, we didn't know the standardizations in this uh, or for those of at least one of those studies, but it's not was not significant even at a higher dose. There was a study, however, that found potential increases in strength and size. Two of those uh, testosterone studies tested power output, and one of them showed an increase while the other one did not. It's worth noting, though, that they found the strength increases to be seemingly random, and they recommended for more data to be found on this before making any claims, and they were using 1.5 grams of it as opposed to 50 milligrams. Now, on Bucked Up's website, they mentioned a study demonstrating a 4% increase in bench press, bench press strength and a 10.1% increase in squats, along with significant improvement in aerobic capacity compared to placebo. Now, we found that study in the Central European Journal of Sports Sciences and Medicine, but we learned that the researchers in that study were using 2,700 milligrams of deer antler velvet. That's a huge difference. And uh, like really making the point, we don't know the standardization of the stuff in the study or the stuff in the product. And even without that knowledge, it was such a higher dosage that you're definitely not getting those benefits from this pre-workout. And so that's why the uh, title of the article written about this product, and if you saw the image on our Instagram, uh, it says, come for the deer antler velvet, stay for the synactive. And that's kind of the point here that I really wanted to make is that while deer antler velvet may attract kids or uh, new people to the industry and the community who are familiar with the controversy of deer antler velvet, it, if you remember it being involved in the NFL and stuff like that, I'm sure it gets, gets a lot of eyeballs. And I totally understand why they would want to do that. It gets a lot of attention. But even with all of that, it does not really pan out in the scientific evidence and data. And that's why we said, come for the deer antler velvet, stay for this inactive. Because after that, they as well have astrogen and actogen. Now, actogen is the old name for synactive. It was a little bit too close to astrogen. And if you look at the formula, you can <laughs> kind of really see that. You've got 25 milligrams of, uh, milligrams of astrogen and 25 milligrams of actogen. It's the same product as is being used now for synactive. I don't know why they haven't changed the label yet, but hopefully they do soon to catch up with the time. Now, these are both panax and ginseng extracts with a little bit of other things added in. Astrogen has astragalus, and uh, Synactive has a Rosa Rocks Burgi. If you were to check out my whole video on the differences in the uh, similarities and the synergies between these ingredients, you'd see that there's probably a lot of different benefits of taking them together and why they're actually different, even though they are both using a similar extract. Um, astrogen helps with increasing absorption of dozens of different ingredients, as well as lowering intestinal wall inflammation, which is really huge for most humans today uh, with the processed foods that we eat, with the type of oxidative stress that we are um, exposed to. There's a lot of different inflammation going on in our body, and I thought that was a pretty significant change, especially in our intestines with uh, the amount of love for gut health going on right now. I think estrogen is a pretty contending ingredient for that category. Synactive, seen as actogen, again, in this product, just so everyone is following along, is an incredible ingredient that is making waves in the industry. Uh, which does a lot of different things from lowering tons of different uh, inflammatory markers down to helping deal with senescent cells, which are cells towards the ends of their um, life 
expectancy, helping kind of kill them off and make room for new muscle cells or whatever cells coming in. Synactive is an ingredient that I have been using a crazy amount of. I actually really like it at like a full 200 milligrams. I understand that's almost 10 times more than is in this product, but if you are to use a couple different products that contain it throughout the day, you easily get there. Believe me, I'm somewhere around there right now. And so I'm betting that if you use this for a whole month, while the citrulline works great for the pump, the caffeine and the theobromine is giving you a whole bunch of stimulants, the beta alanine is helping with your endurance. There's a whole bunch of other stuff going on. That synactive for those 30 days, I really think is helping a lot of people perform better, recover better, and train really well. It's likely not the deer antler velvet. And that's not hate. Right here at Price Plow, we're honest about this stuff. We are straight by the book and the science. We break down the data and tell you what you may actually experience based on what science is telling us. Obviously, we get hyped about different stuff and all that, how, you know, whatever happens in the industry. There's exciting stuff going on. But by the book here, is it the best pre workout in the world? Well, there really is no best, but I am happy that people who are going into Vitamin Shop and finding something mainstream are finding something that actually does deliver a decent amount of great ingredients. Especially especially Synactive as it's growing in the industry. With that all being said, I do have to say we have a business affiliate relationship with New Live, the creators of Astrogen and Synactive, but I purchased this product myself. I went on down to Vitamin Shop, found it because I wanted to talk about it. I thought that it was a great idea to be talking about. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of search volume for the product, people looking to see why it works for them, why it works for their friends, should they purchase it, whatever. Hopefully this was helpful and informative. After finding a product like this, if you come to find our channel, I, implore you check out the rest of our channel we have a lot of really great uh content breakdowns on great pre-workouts that you may want to elevate yourself from a mainstream product into where we've got all sorts of new and interesting ingredients or different dosages or synergies or stuff to try out that may be interesting to you. Well, okay, if I think is actually a great entry to the market, if you don't know much about pre-workouts and you end up here, you end up with a bunch of different clinical dosages and I don't have any problem with that. What we do have a problem with is misusing ingredients for science that doesn't really um, pertain to them because the dosages aren't appropriate for them. So with that all being said, I hope this was helpful, informative, and I really appreciate you making this far in the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. I do check the comments and I'd love to talk about this product, the company, the industry, the science, whatever. As always guys, I appreciate you so much for watching and have a great day. Welcome to Price Plow.